One of the most common questions that we get throughout the industry is, what am I looking for and what's the difference between the sensors that you provide? During this video, I'm going to talk you through each individual module and the difference between them and some of the features that they include. The first one that we're gonna start with is the IMU because it's the most basic. It is the core to the rest of our sensor products. The first sensor that we're gonna go over is the IMU or the inertial measurement unit. This is the most basic of the three and the most important thing about the IMU is that each one of these modules contains IMUs inside of it. All right, so the IMU is a sensor that has several different types of sensors inside of them. It has accelerometers, it has gyros, it has magnetometers, and it has barometers. When you purchase an IMU, what you're getting is the raw data from the calibrated sensors. So when you plug an IMU into the inertial sense firmware, the firmware is gonna tell you what what the accelerometer is doing and the data that it's seeing. It's gonna tell you what the gyro is doing and the data that the gyro logs. It's gonna do the same with the magnetometer and output that raw data as well as the output from the barometer. In addition to these individual sensors, the IMU is GPS aided. So you are also going to receive the raw data that is being given from the GPS. When you purchase an IMU, that is the data that you're going to be provided with. What makes these other sensors better than the IMU is that they still have all this IMU data inside, but there's something we call a Kalman filter, which fuses all this data together and outputs something easier for customers and engineers to understand, which leads us to the AHARS, or the Attitude Heading Reference System. The AHARS has all of these same components inside of it, and it outputs the same raw data. What's special about the AHARS is the Kalman filter. What a Kalman filter does is a Kalman filter makes assumptions, and it's a series of algorithms that fuse all this data together and output something called the roll, pitch, and yaw. If you're unfamiliar with these terms, roll, I like to consider like doing a barrel roll. I like to consider the pitch, the forward and backward tilt of your device. And the yaw is given by the magnetometer. So it's basically your compass direction that the application is facing. One of the terms that I used while explaining the AHARS module was a Kalman filter. Let's go into a little more detail of what a Kalman filter is. A Kalman filter, like I said, is a series of algorithms, okay? So you have the IMU data, okay? That's the raw data that's being output by the calibrated sensors. You have a robot, okay? We've got a robot here. Let's give him an antenna. All right, this is a little rover that drives along sidewalks. This is a delivery robot, all right? And this is delivering food for a local restaurant called Woody's. Woody's robot delivers barbecue, all right? And it runs along a sidewalk to make its deliveries, okay? Let's say roughly this sidewalk, okay, is about three feet. The Kalman filter is gonna take this IMU data and it's going to fuse it with the GPS. GPS is only accurate to two and a half to three meters. So what does that say if you're just using GPS on a three foot sidewalk? All right, say this is your map right here, and these are crossroads to a street. Your robot technically should be right here on the side of the road, but because of the error that comes with GPS, your robot could be anywhere inside of this circle. This is an issue because if you're on a three foot wide sidewalk and the GPS is only reading to two and a half meters in accuracy, you will never know if your robot is actually on the sidewalk or if it's somewhere close to it. Okay, you come too far off the sidewalk, your robot could potentially get run over or hit by a car. A Kalman filter takes every single one of the sensors inside of the IMU, including the GPS, and it's able to fuse all that information together. So say your robot knows exactly where it is, 
when you start, the Kalman filter is able to use a wheel odometry sensor, okay, to fuse that data with the GPS, as well as the data from the magnetometer, and it's able to give you a more accurate idea based on where that robot was to where it's going because of all of the different sensor fusions going on. So now, if the robot has the magnetometer tell it it's now no longer going south but going east, you know that it is moving in the wrong direction, and the Kalman filter can help you correct that issue inside of the computer or inside of the robot itself. When understanding a Kalman filter, it's very important that we understand that there are different grades of Kalman filter that can be provided. In the case of an AHARS or an Attitude Heading Reference System, Although that device is GPS aided, the Kalman filter is going to be limited to just fusing the data that you receive from the IMU itself. So the GPS, you're still going to receive raw GPS coordinates, but unfortunately with the Kalman filter involved with an attitude heading reference system, the fusion is going to stop there with roll, pitch, and yaw. If you need your GPS data fused into the mix, we recommend that you go with an INS, an inertial navigation system, and that's because it contains what we call an extended Kalman filter. The third sensor product that we offer, the highest grade or the highest quality version is the INS. The INS is a combination of all the sensors down the line. It's a combination of the AHARS as well as the IMU. Okay, INS stands for inertial navigation system. The keyword right there is inside the S. This is a system. A system basically consists of a whole bunch of different tasks being accomplished, right? So it's taking all of the IMU data, it's using a Kalman filter to fuse all that IMU together, and then the final step that it's taking is it's fusing all of that fused data from the AHARS together with the GPS. This gives you higher precision. One of the best examples that I can think of is our INS on board a drone. Okay, say we're using this drone for precision agriculture. Okay, it's doing survey of some kind. So if you're using an AHARS, it's just going to give you the roll, pitch, and yaw of the device. Once that data becomes fused with the GPS, okay, the GPS gets a higher update rate up to a kilohertz, and it's able to update as it moves and this data is going to continue fusing. If you lose GPS for up to five seconds, you're not going to lose its path because the sensor fusion is going to take over. And as long as within those five seconds we're able to get GPS back, you don't lose the valuable data that you were using. So to help you better understand the function of an INS, it takes all the data from the AHARS, so the roll, the pitch, and the yaw, to help, it, to help the system understand the orientation of the drone to determine where it's going to be. In addition to that, it fuses it with the GPS. GPSs have what we call update rates, right? And so as the flight, as this drone continues to fly, it's going to basically be dotting out its path up to a kilohertz. And so every little motion that this drone goes through position-wise is going to follow that. And it's going to help the filter in the output in the software be more precise and more accurate than that of the AHARS or the IMU. Because instead of getting raw GPS coordinates, you're getting a fused position to go along with the motion data that's coming from the inertial sensors. So, Compare this level of accuracy of an INS to that of just your IMU, okay? It's still going to have all of this data along with the raw GPS coordinates, but that's only going to update at five to 10 hertz. That means that there is all this space for error where you don't know where your device is versus a kilohertz that has a significantly higher amount of update rate. So just in summary, you have the fused sensor data, okay, where the data, the inertial data is fused with the data of the GPS, 
that outputs at a higher rate to the data over here of just the raw GPS coordinates. There's significantly more room for error in between the boxes that are spaced out farther apart. So if you have these gaps in your data, it leaves room for error. Each individual sensor has a wide variety of use case options. These use cases are actually very similar to the sense that it really depends on the type of company that is purchasing these sensors. You can use an IMU in place of an INS. If you do, you need to be prepared to build your own Kalman filter that's going to fuse its sensor data to make it an AHARS and also fuse the data from the GPS. So an IMU has a wide range of use cases. You can use it in an autonomous car, for example. Okay, you can use it in using a quadricopter. You can use it on a marine boat of some kind or an autonomous ship. Okay, if you are to use an IMU, be prepared to use your resources, which, can, which may be significant, to developing your own filter. Okay, the same goes for an AHARS. A lot of people have purchased an AHARS from us for use cases, and a lot of them don't need the GPS fusion. One of my personal favorites is there was a, a cave that was being explored by a university down in Peru. They had a drone that they were sending into a mine shaft and they had no need for GPS. Therefore, the AHARS was the better option for them because they didn't need to create their own filters or algorithms to fuse the GPS data, but at the same time, they were able to accomplish everything they needed to just by having the roll and the pitch and the yaw. If you're using an INS, which is a lot of startups, a lot of startups that work with us are companies that frankly just don't want to utilize their resources to build their own filters. You know, it takes a, lo it takes a long time to make the algorithms you need for an INS to perform the way that you would like it to. So if you don't want to make your own filters and you want something that comes out of the box, ready to start swinging, the INS is the best option. We've got use cases in quadricopters, our sensor is in cars, our sensor is inside marine applications of many different types, and defense and aerospace is using this kinds of sensor in a lot of different ways because they wanna be building their toys, they wanna be making things they don't want to be dealing with software algorithms to make the GPS function better. The type of customer that would purchase an IMU is a customer with un unlimited resources. This is going to be your multi-million dollar company or a company who's going to spend millions, possibly billions, on the product that they're developing because they're going to have all the resources they need to make their own Kalman filter. They're not going to need someone else's outsourced algorithms. They're just going to do it themselves. The type of person that is purchasing an AHARS does not need GPS fusion or they have, they have similar experience making these algorithms, but they basically want to do their own GPS fusion. Okay? These are still going to be larger companies with a significant amount of resources. The INS is for the person who wants to take the machine to market as fast as possible. They don't want to spend their time and resources making their own filter. Frankly, they want an out-of-the-box solution that they're able to plug in and get working as fast as possible. And this is our most popular product because autonomy is up and coming. It is something that is happening today. And if you wanna keep up with the market and the trend, you need to act now.